Today, we are talking about rats. Hello guys, Enrique here, and on this first guide about everything of water cooling your PC, we're going to be talking about radiators. The radiator is basically the most important part when it comes to water cooling your PC. Because, think about it, it's the only part that removes the heat generated from the components and send it to the surrounding air. You can have the best blocks for your parts and even a high flow pump, but if your radiator is not too par for the heat that your components are creating, it's never going really to work because it's not going to be able to dissipate all of that. And basically, how a radiator works is that when warm liquid comes inside of it, it gets distributed and flows from one part of the radiator to the other one, and you also have these small fins that are made in a zigzag pattern, that what they do is to add more surface contact of metal and material to dissipate even more heat. Now let's speak a little bit about the materials that you can find in your radiator. The most common ones are copper, brass, and aluminum. Aluminum, aluminum. You're not going to see so much of a heat dissipation difference between these materials. Of course, aluminum is going to be a little bit less as copper. The only thing that you really have to look out is not to mix your metals. Copper and brass and even nickel it's okay, when they work together on a loop, you are not going to have any problems, but when you introduce aluminium into the loop that is also made of copper, you're going to start to see a lot of corrosion inside of it. That is why most of the radiators that combine copper and aluminium is mostly a copper core and the fins that they are never in contact with the water are made of aluminium. So make sure, please, that if all the components that you are going to use are made of the same material, because if not, you are going to have a really bad day. Copper, on the other hand, is considered a precious metal and is more expensive than aluminium. That's why you start to see some complete kits or loops made from aluminium where everything, including the blocks, are made of this metal. But working all together, it should not be a problem and they are more cost efficient. Now, you have a lot of different sizes and thickness of rods and they are mostly measured by the size and quantity of fans that you can attach to them. The most common ones are used is 120 to 40 and 360 millimeters. What this means is that you can attach one, two, or three, or even four 120 millimeter fan to it. But you also find the 140, 280, and 420, nice that they use the 140 mm fans. And you can also find more specific ones, for example, made for servers, that they are really small but thick, especially used to be inside of these U spaces, server cases that you all know. Into the thickness, you can have radiators all the while from a slim one that is 20 mm to the big beast that can be 80 mm, being the most common around the 30 and 45 mm thickness. The more surface area that you have, the greater the wattage dissipation it will be, up to a point, because it comes a moment when you are going to have diminishing returns. So, when it comes to the question on how many radiators you will need, as a rule, you want to have at least a 120 mm rod for component that you want to cool. So, if you are only planning into cooling your CPU, a single 120 mm rod, it will do the work. But this, we are talking about stock speed and stock configuration. If you are planning into overclocking your components, I recommend at least two times that or a 240 mm rod. But of course, every case is different and you will have to see what you can install in your case. For example, the thing that you have only placed to place a 360 mm radiator inside of your case but you are planning to water cool your CPU and also your GPU. Let's make an example that in your case, you can only fit one 360 mm radiator. So, I will recommend to use better a thicker radiator than a thin one, if, of course, you have place on it. Because you're going to have more water flow inside of it, and of course, more contact surface to dissipate the heat. Then, what I will recommend to anyone that wants to water cool their system is to use as many rats as your case can handle. And they are inside of your budget, of course. And I know that it comes to the point where I said before that adding more radiator space, it will give you diminishing returns, but you can have your fans working at a lower RPM, making your system quiet. 
And that is the second biggest advantage when it comes to water cooling your system, that it will not only give you cooler components, but they're also going to work quiet. But now guys, the radiators can only do so much. And to be able to move the heat away from it and into the air, you will need to add some fans to it. And what type of fans do you need? Well, the most widely used fans on the PCs are the ones designed for airflow and the ones designed for static pressure. In this case of the fans that you want to attach to your radiator, I recommend the static pressure ones because they are designed to fight the resistance and to move the air against it. What is perfect for the amount of resistance that your radiators can create against the fans. You can have three types of configurations with your fans and the radiator. Push, that is when the fan, it will, of course, push the air through the radiator. Pull, that is obviously the contrary of that, it will pull the air from the radiator. The difference between pull or push is almost nothing. So you aren't going to notice any difference in that. Now, when it comes to push-pull, you're going to see a difference in temperature. But with the downside that you will need more space to set it up, you are going to need double the amount of fans, and with that, of course, the cost is going to increase. And push-pull is what? As this sounds, as you can probably imagine right now, is when you have one fan in one side, pushing the air, and one fan in the other side, pulling the air away from it. Are you planning on water cooling your PC? I'm planning to make more guides and videos like this one, and also a full tutorial of water cooling a PC. So subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss that. Thanks for watching, my friend. Write me in the comments down below if you have any more questions. I always try to read and to answer you all. Thanks again for watching, and like always, see you on the next time. Bye bye.